Have you ever wondered why our tableware and everything ceramics is round? No? I'm just going to tell you anyway. The reason why, if I ask you to imagine a dinner plate, 99% of you, more or less, will imagine something round. And that is because for the last hundreds of years, everything in ceramics has been made on a potter's wheel. Within the last couple of years, the last decade or so, the 3D printer has made its way into almost every aspect of production and even arts. The 3D printer is not limited to circular shapes. It can print every shape you can imagine and even shapes you can't. I will speak to you today about a project I did a couple of years ago while I was studying ceramic design here at the Royal Academy. It is a project about creating beautiful and unique stuff using fully automated robots, the 3D printer, where it is your decisions that creates variety and not any kind of fancy programming, just as if you're using an old-fashioned potter's wheel. So the basics of uh, 3D printing, and if you haven't seen a 3D printer at work, I highly recommend you to go look some of these videos up on YouTube because they are truly mesmerizing to look at. The basis is that you design a shape on your computer and you send that file to a machine which then replicates a physical object which layer by layer by layer is produced onto a printing bed until you eventually have in your hand what was on your screen. And if you haven't tried using 3D printing in prototyping, I bet you wish you had because compared to traditional prototyping, 3D printing takes a fraction of the time, the fraction of, a, of the cost, and is so much better for our environment as it only uses the ex exact amount of material needed and there's no shipping. So what are the downsides? Well, as with many other new technologies, 3D printing has kindled the debate about craftsmanship dying out. Because kind of by definition, automated machines is the complete opposite of traditional craft. I'm here today to talk to, to tell you that that is not necessarily the case, that everything is going to be all right, and we will still all be very able to work as designers and architects, engineers and artists. We just have to conquer the machines and find ways to incorporate them in the creative process. So what we did at the ceramic studio here at the the Academy, the super duper form lab, is that we downloaded the schematics for a 3D printer and we modified it to print uh, not in plastics but in ceramics, in soft clay. And it's actually pretty simple. We built a 3D printer and we, uh, which is a printing bed going up and down, that's your C axis, and then you have this module here going from side to side and back and forth your X and Y axis. And on that module, you have a tube with soft clay. And in one end, you have compressed air, pressing the clay down through the tube, out through a round nozzle, making these very thin, smooth, cylindrical strings on top of each other. And I thought, why? Why does it have to be round? Again, we are being limited by the tool, uh, and I'll tell you, the first shape I drew on my computer when I wanted to test the 3D printer was a cylinder. So to underline that the 3D printer is not limited to circular shapes, I used squares for the rest of the project, still keeping it simple. So I did this test where I looked into how the same square would change shape and appearance by being printed through different uh, differently shaped nozzles. This way, the 3D printer is slowly moving from being a replicating robot into being a tool that I'm actively using 
in my designs. Kind of. Because this only adds to the structure and the surface of the print and not to the object itself. So I was hoping for a bit more complexity than that. So I tried adding more nozzles. When I add more nozzles to the tube and ask the printer to print my square, this is what I get. The printer now provides a whole new layer of complexity to the same shape. And not, e not even that, if I use this multi-nozzle and I rotate it in between prints, the shape of the object changes from time to time, providing virtually endless new shapes, all from the same file. So is this enough? Traditional craft requires material knowledge and usually some kind of human interaction. So I decided to interfere with my prints while it was being printed by either rotating the bed mid-print, basically forcing the clay to obey gravity and fall in these beautiful organic strings until they again find support on the layer underneath. I tried rotate, uh, sorry, tilting the printing bed uh, and aligning the nozzle with the highest end of the bed so that the further the nozzle comes from the surface, the more the clay is searching for something to hold on to, uh, giving me this, this intricate web of porcelain spaghettis, while on the other side, the side closest to the printing bed, is straight. And this one I printed with a double nozzle and physically collapsed one of the shapes that one of the nozzles was printing, resulting in kind of a fused shape of two very different appearances. That means that I couldn't have done these things without the printer, and the printer couldn't have done them without me. And it's even hard to tell which part of the print of the object is the printer and which part is me, because on one hand, you could say that this here, the collapsed part, is me because I forced the printer to do that, while this back here, the straight part, is the printer because that is what a printer does. On the other hand, you could say that this part, the straight part, is me because that's closest to what I drew on my computer, while this the messiness is the authentic expression of a ceramic 3D printer. So where do we draw the line in using machines in artistic crafts? I don't know. <laughs> and I encourage you all to find ways to use your specialized machines in your creative process and not being limited and not being blinded by its intended purposes. So please try this at home. Thank you. <laughs>